That last ball was really interesting. Oh, that's too many great. Who's got it?
I said we're going to be starting in two minutes by hook or by crook. Six o'clock, okay, we're going to start the meeting, Carl. Um, first of all, good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone. Um, thank you for attending this meeting of the Licensing and Public Safety Committee on Tuesday, the 7th, 7th of December, 2021. Before we start this evening, I would just like to outline some housekeeping rules. There are no planned fire alarms, so if it does sound, please leave via the emergency exits. Can I request that all mobile phones are kept on silent and switched off? Thank you. So first of all, we're going to do the introductions of the councillors. I'm the chair, and my, I'm councillor James Flannery, and we'll start with Keith and work that way after Keith and Gareth. True. Councillor Derek Forrest, Leyland Central. Councillor Peter Molyneux, Sandra and Walton. Councillor Jackie Olte. Councillor Colin Sharples representing Earnshaw Bridge, standing in for Councillor Bell, who has mural duties this evening. Thanks for that, Colin. Now, officers. Stephanie Newby, licensing officer. Uh, Jonathan Nero, director of planning and development. Chris Ward, interim licensing team leader. Alex Jackson, legal services team leader. Coral Asprey, democratic member services officer. Thanks, all right, thanks everyone. Thanks for that. Uh, members of the committee are attending in person here at the Civic Centre. Other members of the council may also dial into the meeting via Microsoft Teams to observe and or participate in the meeting. Only members of the committee present at the Civic Centre are entitled to vote. Please note this meeting is recorded and live streamed on YouTube. The web link for this is displayed on the agenda for the meeting, which can be found on the council's website. Members on Teams are asked to keep their microphone on mute and only on mute when they wish to speak. Could I remind members to unmute themselves once they have finished speaking to enable the meeting to proceed smoothly? Okay, thanks everyone. I'm going to go right into the agenda. Any apologies, Coral? Yes, Chair. We've had apologies from Councillors Bell, Blore and Buttery, and we have Councillor Colin Sharples and Gareth Watson in attendance as substitutes, and Councillor Mort is also attending via Teams. Thanks for that, Coral. Um, apologies, Jackie. Um, I never brought you in there, but good to see you. Thank you. Okay, you. okay, Jack. Uh, declaration of interest. Members are requested to indicate at this stage in the proceedings any items on the agenda in which they intended to declare an interest. Members are reminded that if the interest is a disclosable pecuniary interest, they must have the leave the must leave the room for the whole of that item. Does anyone have any interest to declare? Okay, Carl, the call that is none. Item number three: minutes of the Licensing and Public Safety Committee. I have the minutes of the light the last meeting of the Licensing and Public Safety Committee in front of me for approval. 
Are there any points of accuracy on the minutes? None. And then can we propose the minutes for approval being proposed by Councillor Keith Martin and a seconder, please? Uh, Jackie Altier is the seconder. Thanks for that, Jackie. Thanks, Keith. So they've been approved. Thank you. Uh, item number four, minutes of the General Licensing Subcommittee. I have the minutes of the last meeting of the General Licensing Subcommittee in front of me for approval. Are there any points of accuracy on the minutes? Okay, none. Can we propose the minutes for approval? Councillor Ogilvie uh, proposed them a seconder, please. Derek Forrest, Councillor Derek Forrest is a seconder. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks everyone. That's a good start. Very efficient. We're going to go into item number five, uh, which is we're going to bring Steph in uh, to present this. Steph, away you go. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, members and everyone else. The purpose of today's report that I'm presenting is to make amendments to your statement of licensing policy for gambling. Um, it's quite a simple report and there's only a couple of minor changes. So the council is required by section 349 of the Act to publish a new gambling policy every three years. The council is constrained by the provisions of the Act, the guidance and any regulation that's made under that Act. So in order to make sure we're up to date with current guidelines and regulations, we've reached out to the Gambling Commission who've confirmed that our policy was up to date and following contact with them, there are no further, there are no further amendments required to our gambling policy other than the two minor modifications, which you'll find on page two and three of the report. Um, the two minor modifications are the amount of licensed premises that we have within the borough. That's changed from 13 to 11. And the second one is the population numbers, which have increased um, by 7,168 residents. So considering there are no fundamental changes to your policy, members are now asked to bypass the consultation process and take this to full council for their approval. Just those two minor modifications. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thanks, Steph. And that was the revised report, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to open it up to committee. Does anyone indicate any comments for this item? No. Okay, I'm looking for a proposer. Councillor Martin, proposer. Gareth, Councillor Gareth Watson, a second there. Okay, and we go to the vote. Do we, how do we take the vote on? Is it the, Carol, is it the vote on here? Is the vote on here? Yeah. But, uh, no, we're not using the voting system. Right, okay. We can just do a show of hands. Yeah, okay. okay. So, all show of hands, all in favour? Okay, thanks, Steph. Well done. I hey, passed. Excellent. Good job. Hey, you can go now. <laughs> hey, but the next item, we come to Chris, who's warned us that he's got three PowerPoint presentations. So, uh, over to you, Chris, on the single use restricted private hire licenses, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, if you just bear with me one moment, I'll just share my screen. Okay, so agenda item six single use restricted private hire licenses. Um, this report is to inform members of the Licensing Public Safety Committee about a recent request from South Wilborough Council licensed operator for a single use restricted private hire licence to be available from, the, from this licensing authority. A written request from 24-7 Limited, a licensed operator, can be found attached to this report as Appendix 1. For some time, requests have been received from a number of operators for the possibility to have various aspects of the application process removed mainly regarding the local area knowledge test. For drivers that predominantly are performing work which is outside of the borough um, or does not have the need for a local area knowledge. Various licensed private hire operators advised officers that they are struggling to employ private hire drivers due to the obstacles put in place when during the application process with the required documents as per the conditions of the taxi licensing policy. The current policy wording regarding the knowledge test can be found on section nine of page two of the report. 
Requests have been received from operators who solely operate school transports or airport services. These licensed operators are not performing the normal private hire work, but performing school contract work that requires regular collection of one-off child from spe with specific requirements to be taken from the same school every day or are performing specific air air sorry, airport contract work or corporate contract work, which takes passengers to the home and out of the, the borough. Usually it could be Manchester or Liverpool Airport. These are not drivers who are working predominantly within the borough, but doing, not doing short journeys where the knowledge of the local area is still required. These type of drivers are normally employed by operators and are part-time drivers oft, often retire, retire and perform one or two journeys per day. That could be taking specific children to and from school or taking bookings to the airport. So what is the need and requirements for a local area knowledge test? It's to make sure all licensed drivers give members of the public the best service possible. Every private hire and, every private hire and acne carriage driver is expected to collect passengers on time. Licensed drivers are expected to know the shortest journeys across key parts of South Ribble and have a good knowledge and, and addresses of local amenities. If a driver takes the wrong route or gets lost, it may cause additional charges being passed on to passengers and result in conflicting situations. So what are the requirements of the current, current test? The knowledge test co costs £25 per test. If after three attempts the applicant fails, the applicant must then wait four weeks to apply again to take another test. In order to pass the test, the applicant must answer 15 out of tw 20 questions correctly from the following topics. Private hire hackney vehicle conditions and legislation. The highway called places of interest within the borough, pubs, schools, churches, restaurants, routes throughout the borough, South Rubber Borough Council's boundaries and the basic understanding of English language and numeracy. So what would the restricted badge allow? The badge would allow, would be conditioned, the private hire badge without a requirement for a knowledge test, so the knowledge test would be removed completely from being required for this type of badge. It limits what type of work the driver can actually perform and would only be, would only be allow the holder to be um, licensed to perform the following task. Pre-arranged school or special educational needs, transport, pre-arranged airport work or pre-arranged corporate travel. All of the documentation required as part of the new application process will still be required. So your medicals, um, DBSs, DVLA checks, um, right to work checks would all still be required. Um, applicants would still be required to obtain a level two qualification in taxi licensing, um, which applicant would need a, a basic English and math skills to pass. Enforcement of the licences. If drivers were caught performing any other private hire work than listed via the restricted badge, this would, this would be classed as a breach of conditions and would be enforced accordingly. Unless extraordinary circumstances were in place, that driver would be placed before the committee for a decision whether to revoke the driver's badge or not. The proposed policy wording can be found on section 33 of page 3 of the report. The proposed conditions added to the private hire badge can be found in section 34 of the report on page four. There are two other options available to committee. Option one would be remove the knowledge test completely for all private hire drivers. The knowledge test could still be kept in place for drivers who still need a local area knowledge for hackney carriage drivers, as they will still be hailed down in the streets and would still require that local knowledge because they could be picked up on the streets and, and take somebody home to an address in South Ribble, so they still would need that local area knowledge. Operators within South Ribble use PDA meters which send bookings directly to drivers' PDAs, including a route planned on their sat-nav. Option two could to, re to remove just the local area knowledge element of the test, keep the private hire test in place but remove the local aspect to test completely for private hire drivers, um, keeping a section of the test for highway called English and math skills. Um, again, as technology has changed, drivers use PDA meters to send the routes directly to the PDA meter that works sat nav systems. So the, the, the local area knowledge isn't a necessity as much as it has been in the past with the, the, uh, the way technology has developed. Um, representatives from 24 7 Limited will now briefly, briefly address the committee. Following this, members are now asked to consider the evidence submitted in the report. Um, to agree that licensing section undertake a period of consultation for six weeks with the relevant stakeholders in respect to proposing um, the regarded single use or restricted private hire licences. 
um, and to agree to receive a report with the outcome of the consultation at a future meeting and to consider what effect change in the vehicle age policy, well, sorry, what effects would have changing the single use badges. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks, Chair. Um, just, just, is it just the one Christina wants to speak at? So, Christina and Sam are, are operators. So, do you want to come in now, Christina, and make your contribution? Thank you. Sorry, Jackie. Sorry, can I just declare that I know Sam from a previous employment position? That's all. That's just nothing to Thanks. do with this, but. All right. Yes. All right, Sam. You okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> She's lovely, isn't she? Hey. Well, we know Jackie's lovely, so she obviously thinks you are. So well done and you're welcome. So, Christina, over to you. Good evening. I'm Christina and um, we're representing 24 7 Limited. We're a special needs school transport company um, and we operate over all of Lancashire. We're a much bigger company. We are all, almost national, but um, I, um, I'm the managing, um, I manage the Lancashire area. We've been struggling since we started here in Lancashire, which was March last year, to try and um, license drivers locally, mainly because of the local area knowledge tests that are in place in all the districts. Um, I live in South Ripple, so ideally we would like to um, have our business based in South Ripple. What we are experiencing at the moment um, is even though a lot of the schools that we operate in, that we're contracted uh, with Lancashire County Council, because we're special needs schools, the children come from other districts. So this local area knowledge test um, is a bit of a barrier because a lot of the children are coming from outside the borough. And similarly, the children that live inside the borough are going outside the borough into Chorley, West Lanks and Preston. So it is a bit of a, a restriction for us um, ideally, we'd like to use the same licensing council for all of our drivers um, from a logistical perspective, but also we want to be spending money within this borough. Um, we are asking for a conditional license purely to uh, remove the topographical uh, element of the knowledge test. Everything else we are happy with, you know, it's um, there's no health and safety compromised in any of the requests. We would still adhere to everything else that... Um, is in place at the moment in the requirements. Since 2009, the amount of school transport operators has reduced from 200,000 to 80,000. And obviously since COVID, that reduction has been massive. We're really struggling to get drivers to do this kind of work. Um, one of our neighboring um, councils has lifted this restriction in September. And as a result, in the two weeks following that, they got 160 driver applications. So I do think that it would bring people into the industry a little bit more. Um, we don't operate under private hire. So all we do is school contracts. Our drivers work 190 days of the year just doing school transport and respite work, um, all pre-contracted. Um, so we don't think there would be any uh, obstacles or reasons to, um, to to not be able to go ahead with this. I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any for oh, me. All right, Christina, thanks. Thanks for your contribution. Okay, we might come back to you in a minute. Thank you. Okay, just like to open up to committee, please, um, for any comments at this stage. Yeah, Alan, Councillor Ogilvy. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah. On the, the basis of the request, is the, if you like, the disagreement with the need for the knowledge test, is that due to the cost of the test or failure rate of the test? And do we have any statistics on what failure percentage is of people who actually take part in, in that test? Um, and the last comment I've got really is, as this would be, um, if this is accepted, the, um, as it would be a restricted licence, although it shouldn't happen, how would a member of the public know that when a, a cab turned up for their fare that it was actually a restricted licence and really shouldn't be there? What physical signs would they have that that, that would be the situation? That's all. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Alan. Um, Chris? 
Um, Gateway administer the knowledge test, so we'd have to look to get the statistics off firm step off their system, but I would have thought we can get that. Um, we can look to maybe put a badge in the window. Um, there may have to be an additional cost to the, the, applica the applicant, but that may be something we could look at. If it's a, What we didn't want to do is, is change the actual look of the badge and just basically condition it as a condition. You can only do this work within that badge. Um, we didn't want to have a third badge, which we were issuing. Um, but I see your point that if they did want to sort of go off to another operator and work, um, they would be in breach condition. So we would put them up in front of the, the committee as per the condition. But we could maybe look at maybe putting something in the window as um, a badge that they need to slot into the window. But we'd have to look at the expense of that on top of the, the cost of the application. So we could look at that. It's similar to like what the, um, the vehicles have in the front window. We could maybe arrange some sort of pouch that they slot in with some sort of sticker or, or badge that goes into the window there, we could look to accommodate that. Yeah. Okay. Alan, is that okay? Thanks. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make the system more complicated than, than it need, than it needs to be. Um, and as I said in my, in, in my remarks, it really shouldn't happen in the first place anyway. So it depends what other members of the committee feel about it, whether they think it's worthwhile having some additional visibility of, of the restriction or not. Thanks, Alan. Um, Derek? Thank you, Chair. Um, this is not just a South Ribble problem, this is a national problem. Post-Brexit, there's a considerable shortage of, ta of taxi drivers generally. And the concern that I have particularly is that um, well, I've only got to mention the name Sarah Everard for us to start wondering about this the situation of having ladies late at night um, unable to get taxis and get them home safely um, because simply because in South Ribble we've insisted on a, a knowledge test, um, a knowledge test which in my view is, is totally and utterly redundant. Um, we're all of us in our pockets carrying mobile phones with very sophisticated navigation um, in, in them. Uh, taxi drivers, I mean I've had in London, I've had Uber drivers using uh, navigation systems, and it's great. I can actually watch him going along and make sure he's stuck to the to where I was intending him to go. Um, so, you know, it's not unusual by any means for taxi drivers to have um, to have um, the uh, navigation systems. Uh, and I'm sure if we took the knowledge away and insisted upon their in, in, installing and using navigation systems, their knowledge requirement would be fulfilled. I don't think there's any, I would want to go and change any of the other conditions. I am obviously concerned that drivers uh, know the highway code, are safe to drive and have safe vehicles. Um, and uh, also, of course, that uh, uh, they're checked against their, their criminal criminal record. Um, but I would hate to, to think um, that my daughter or my wife was stuck out on the street this Christmas, um, unable to catch, a, to get a taxi, purely and simply because we councillors have insisted on an archaic precondition of people um, getting getting taxi licences. It's most in, more important to get drivers and to the taxi drivers than to insist on the uh, and insist on this this knowledge test romantic though it may sound um it, i think it is totally and utterly useless okay Th thanks for your contribution there um yeah i'm just going to bring chris back in please it, it is the first option of the other two options that we proposed um the highway code, you've got to pass a driving test at the end of the day to be a taxi driver. So you do pass a, a highway code test when you when you pet take your own when you take your own um, driving test. The MVQ level two qualification does test the drivers on the maths and English skills as well. So the local area knowledge test is, is in place to, to cover three aspects really of maths, English and local knowledge. The sort of local knowledge could be classed as redundant now with the use of PDAs and sat nav. The maths and English is actually covered by um, passing the MVQ level two, which we would still keep as a qualification and still a requirement to take a, to take a badge um, from this authority. So it is covered under that aspect that you've got a driving license, people are covered highway code. You do have to pass a knowledge test, um, a written test, don't you, for the uh, driving license and you, 
year practical test and if we're still asking for an MVQ level two test, if you're just looking at the local area knowledge test part is redundant now, um, option one would give you that option of removing the knowledge test because the maths and English part of the test are still covered within that MVQ level two qualification. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. But just, just to clear things up here, that we are going to consultation anyway on this, aren't we? Yeah, it's up to the members. We can, we can consult on the three options of um, the single-use badges or the two options, if you wanted to do it that way, to see what the trade wanted. So we could have the single-use badges, option one, remove it completely, or option two, just remove the local knowledge element. So we could consult on all, th all three of that, if, if that's what members require, and we can come back on that then at a later date. Okay, Okay. yeah, thanks for that. Councillor Martin? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd like to see something about a restriction on the license perhaps in, that's visible um, but I, I would imagine if, if, if one of these drivers were to go to another company because obviously they don't do private hire so uh, 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 on call hire so to speak so if they were to go anywhere they, their license would be checked through yourselves anyway um, I, I, I would disagree with colleagues about um, the knowledge test because I, I mean my, my, one of my jobs is driving a, a gritter around West Lanks and the amount of times we lose GPS. So it's all fine and well, but if the Americans have the ump with us, they can turn it off and you won't have any sat nav. Um, so and it, it's a precautionary thing as well. So I, I believe the knowledge should stay in for those drivers who, who need them, for, for instance, Hackney or for local drivers, um, simply because the sat, sat navs can fail. And sometimes you can get what you call a cross-track error, which can send you miles away from where you think you are. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to propose this and push it forward as it is. Okay, we'll come back to you. Thanks for that, uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, any other contributions, Councillor Alty? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I quite like the idea of the, the restricted journeys and, and having that detailed and that narrowness. Um, one, one thing that comes under this, I think, uh, I had a child who had um, who was taken by school provision transport um, to St Anne's. So I've experienced it firsthand. And the one thing that parents do want, and the one thing, so we're, we're always talking about safety, but the one thing that parents of SEN need um, are consistency. And that seems to be what this will provide. And I think that's something that can't be um, kind of overstated. Um, young people that have SEN need the consistency and need to know that the provider will be the same over and over again. And this seems to be a restricted practice which will enable that. So. Thanks for that, Jackie. Okay. Any other comments, please? Okay. Um, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to I'm going to draw this item to a close. But just before I do, there's a couple of points here just to make it clear. And Chris, I'm going to bring you back in. So the first thing we need to do is note the contents of the report. So there's no vote required. Okay, so we've noted that. So the next one's, Chris, and you just take us through what we need to be here because we've got to take a couple of votes, I think, on this one. I think there's four options that members have got to look to um, not take this to consultation. Um, and then you've got the, the three options to, to consult on whether you want to consult on all three options. Just consult on the option of um, the restricted badges or consult on the, the other two options as well. So there's the, the option of consulting um, just on the um, restricted badges or on, on all, all three options, whether you've got the restricted badges, the complete removal of the knowledge test for all private hire drivers, or you've got um, the removal of the local area knowledge part of um, the local area, area knowledge test. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. So, Keith, what was you going to propose, please? I, I just proposed the, the restricted licence side of it, leave the knowledge test in for, for others. Okay, so that's a proposal. Do we have a second there before? I, I'm just going to do something a little bit out of We have a second on that. Councillor Alty is second on that. But just before we go to the vote, please. Sorry, would you just like to introduce yourself and make a contribution as, on this agenda, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Would you just come to the mic here, please? Thank you. Is that all right, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Dave Cox. I own TCE Airport Travel. Um, I've operated for 17 years in January. Uh, all we do is airport transfers. That's it. Um, I've been advertising for drivers since July of this year, since COVID's obviously gone, if you will. Um, 
I've currently not been able to employ one driver. Um, I'm going to wind my company up, probably. Um, it's just proven impossible. What you've just said, and I mean this with the greatest of respect, okay, I'm not trying to have a go at anybody at all, but what you've just said is total nonsense. If the Americans are in the position that you've just said, worrying about sat now for a taxi driver is least of a problem. And if that's an objection, it, it's a silly one. Okay, that's just my opinion, that's all. Um, the, I'm sick to the back teeth of hearing about how people want to say, feel safe in a taxi. There's a, a copper who's just killed a poor lass down south, um, Sarah Everard, just only months ago. And that's a copper who's been probably checked a million times more than taxi drivers. And yet taxi drivers, as you've just been saying two minutes ago when I walked in, you want your daughter to feel safe. Well, why would you not feel safe with your taxi driver? Any more than, and everybody's done this, you operate, you want your house decorating, you get a decorator in. You want an electrician in, you, want, you get an electrician, a plumber, a plumber, a joiner, a joiner. Not one of them have been tested to the same degree as a taxi driver has. And yet for some reason, Everybody allows them in the house, even to the point of at times, and everyone's done this, you give them a key while you nip out to go to the shops and you've give this guy a key who you don't know from Adam. And yet those guys have to go through all this rigmarole just to get a license. And I've got now, I've had eight guys approach me since I've been advertising since July to drive for me. It's only part time. And they're perfectly good guys. There's nothing wrong with them whatsoever. And I'm turning. Well, I'm not turning them away. I'm telling them what they've got to go through to get the exit to get the license. It costs best part of five hundred quid. It takes forever. And as an example, and I've done this slightly on purpose to be first before you shout at me, Steph. <laughs> and I applied for my police check in July. It came back clear in October. I then had to do a child safety test, which I was then told at the front desk, I'd get told that I passed or not, and they'd let me know. And nobody got hold of me. Now I'd let that ride, and I let it ride on purpose, for the purpose of coming here tonight. I've still not got my license, and I applied in July. How on earth do I apply? How do I get? And that's it, Steph, before you say, it's my fault that. I've let it ride, I've, but I've done it on purpose because I was told from here they would get in touch with me. That's not you guys, but I'm not blaming Steph and Chris for this, not at all. But the system's lousy. I was told I'd get contacted. Any person that's applying for a badge doesn't know that I, I know I could have spoke to you two guys. They don't know that. So I've still not got a badge and I know what I'm doing. These guys that are applying don't know what they're doing. It's costing 500 quid. It's a part-time driving job. Just go and work for Amazon. I wouldn't do it. So it's impossible to get drivers. And all I hear is that I've, I've done this before to a lot more councillors than this with South Ribble years ago. And it, it, nothing happened then. And I don't expect anything to happen now. And unfortunately, if nothing does happen, my company of 17 years is stopping to trade. Because I just can't get drivers. I can't, as it happens this week, because of COVID, I've had more cancellations than bookings again. I'm going backwards again. But it, it doesn't matter. If, if, it's, if next year I suddenly become as busy as I was, I couldn't cope because I haven't got drivers and I can't recruit drivers. And I've been trying since July. You don't need a not for, for the, my license for just doing airport work. 95% of my work, if not higher, is outside of South Ripple. I'm based in South Ribble, but 95% on a 100 mile round journey, 95 miles is outside of South Ribble because it's going to Manchester or Liverpool, which a knowledge test is a complete waste of time. And as I'm on, I sent Chris a, an email. The college course is a complete and utter waste of time. That should just be scrapped. I don't know who ever thought of it. it what, 17 years ago, it was never a thing. It is now, whether it's a national thing or not, it, it's just a waste of time. The police check is all well and good, but what stops me being a murderer tomorrow? I'm not about to be, but what stops it? The police guy is the perfect example of that. Um, the medical. I, unfortunately, one of my drivers died last May. 
heart attack, he'd passed his medical. What's he to have a medical for? I understand the police get to a point, you know, you don't want a paedophile picking kids up. I understand all that. But it has to be slimlined, reduced in cost, and and made sense, just sensible. At the minute, it is just not sensible. There's so many things wrong with it. But unfortunately, I've done this before and I, I never get anywhere. And it, it's frustrating. Okay, Dave. All right. Well done. Yeah. All right. Good contribution. Just one thing, Councillor Martin, the valued member of our group. So yeah, I, I wasn't being offensive. I'm right. No, I know that. I know that. But you made some very, very good points and we, we've heard you. Yeah. So well done for coming in and doing that. All right. Do I hit that off? Yeah, great. And yeah. thanks to Christina and Sam as well for oh, you making your contribution. Yeah. So just give us, just switch that off, please. That's all right. Just give us a minute then, please, everyone. Yeah, could bring Chris back in here. Thanks. The, uh, the restricted badges, we are looking to target it at school transport, airport transport and corporate travel transport that all aren't operating within South Ribble. And that local er area knowledge requirement, is, it, it isn't necessary. The work in over in Manchester, taking people, people to the airport, the schools, it could be people picking a child up in Preston and taking that child to a school in Blackpool. Um, it could be... Um, we had a gentleman with a vehicle a few weeks ago, didn't we, that, that got an exemption from displaying the plates. He's picking people up from, he's picking footballers up from Manchester or London and taking them to London from Manchester. So there is no local element needed in, in how these businesses operate. Okay. Right. Okay. We need to do something here. Um. <laughs> We're just trying to get the balance here in terms of what we've just heard retrospectively, if that's all right, Dave, Christine and Sam. But obviously, it's we're, we're sort of, we're getting the information now. And listen, that's what it's about. Turning up here and making the efforts come and making us think a bit differently is exactly what your role is. So well done for that. Um, how can we, I'm just looking at Chris now, how can we help these people, the industry, these operators? Do we need to go back, Keith, and review what we've proposed? to help or do we need to to do something to we'll keep with it with we'll, we'll just look for a bit of guidance really i think at the moment you can go out to consultation and make a decision when we bring it back from consultation so we could amend that in the report you can amend what wants to go out to consultation okay so okay i'm going to bring i'm just going to bring council alti back in dave i will bring you back in, in a minute and then uh, gareth wants to come in as well so jackie you first please yeah, I just think there's two two issues here. So we've got um, a, an, an underarching, if you will, the principle for, for the kind of proposal that uh, Keith made and I seconded is, is about enabling something to take place here and now, which alleviates a situation that is currently of urgency and, and, and needs addressing. I think the second part is whether or not we need to go and look at whether we need to consult on um, all the other aspects that were raised and valid points um, to actually move the whole picture forward um, and take into account. I have to say, though, that I, my sat lab regularly takes me on detours that have no end in sight. So I, I perhaps need to change my sat lab. But um, yeah, OK, thanks. Thanks for that, Jackie. Yeah, good point. Gareth? Thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to reiterate more or less what Jackie just said in that there's obviously a number of different issues there. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to be holding up this particular element in that, uh, sorry, you want to, no, no, go for it. You carry on. No. Okay. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be holding anyone up with this in the meantime and meaning that people might be recruited and so on. And obviously some of these, uh, <laughs> the journeys that we're looking at trying to cover with this uh, around SEN and so on, airports, <laughs> Again, we need to get those people into those jobs. Obviously, it's um, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me having the local knowledge, area knowledge test for that. I can certainly understand it for people who are within the borough because sat navs can and do fail. But even then, I am. Um, your knowledge could fail as well, just because you can pass a test to say you can get from A to B doesn't necessarily mean you'll know the the, the, the ins and outs of a particular odd uh, journey or a, a very unused street or some such. Um, I'm assuming a lot of the problems with the other element that was mentioned are related to national issues, um, as in things like the MBQ2 and so on. I'm assuming that's 
beyond our remit and beyond our control. Am I, it appears to be I'm correct in that. So, but yeah, absolutely, if we can bring something up to look at some of the other elements and just perhaps explain back the, which bits can't be done because they're uh, beyond our remit, and that'd be good. That's right. Thank you. So, Gareth, thanks for that. Dave, just before I bring you back in, um, so, Keith, would you be prepared to propose that we go for consultation for everything so we so we can consider everything and give the guys a chance in terms of what they're looking for and then we can then, Chris, take, take our take a decision really from that but also get this information into us which helps the operators as well as as what we're trying to agree uh thanks chair um i think the proposal was was just for people who, who do these sort of transports airports and, and schools i think that was where my bias was around but if there's a general issue um as as alluded to by, by dave then then I'm, I'm happy to go for the whole lot the, the only the only thing I, i'd probably warn of is that that might take a little bit longer because they'll be more involved with it and if there's a if, if there's an equal outcome from all then it might take a bit more to sort of but i'm happy to do that but you're happy to propose that we offer the full yeah. which helps yeah. the operators and helps us understand a bit more because we we're understanding a little bit more because yeah. this is unusual yeah, cool. happen, so i mean it, okay. it's good to hear so comments. good brilliant so keith's just proposed that before Dave and I am going to come back. Derek, are you seconding this and then I'm going to bring in Peter. Can I just be clarified on this? I mean, there seems from what we're saying um, that there's a general agreement with the idea of the restricted license and the question I'm asking is can we bring that in now and immediately implement it and help these people as of now and then go on to consultation on the wider issue of whether we should have a um, ha a, the knowledge test continue in all respects. Okay, great points. Chris, do you want to come in before bringing Peter in? Let the normal process, we've got to full council for decision. So it's whether you'd look to consult or take it straight to full council, if that was the case. Normally you would consult the trade because there's other members of the trade that should really have a say on it. Um, we'll, we'll bring it back to you at a later date and then decide whether you want to take it to full council or not. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. So before I bring Peter in, Derek, I think the, the, the advice is really we do the consultation, but we know where we're trying to get to, if you know what I mean. That makes sense. Yeah, Peter? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, for, for me, um, we, we as a committee have a duty of care. And I think in this case, you know, there's there's one or two things that do need to go to consultation. And, and I, I'm for it going to consultation before it goes to full council um, to let everyone have their say uh, rather than just be sort of checking things out and, and if you like nitpicking, just taking bits out here and there. I think all of them should be discussed and, and go to consultation initially. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Peter. I think the overall objective, what we're saying is, what we're doing is we've listened to what the operators have said. We're going to factor that in here and we're going to make sure that part of the consultation is the objective is to get to where we need to be to help you. That's the message, if that's okay, by Dave, <coughs> Sam and Katina. Is that all right? Are you okay with that? Yeah, okay. So I've had a proposal from Councillor Martin Council, are you prepared to second that? Okay, shall we go for the vote on that, please? Uh, just with a vote with the hands. Okay, so that's carried, Chris, but just before, just in terms of, because the way we do our committee, because we, we're very fluid in terms of respecting people's views, Council Ogilvy wants to come back in, please, just on, but we have gone for the vote and it has been carried, Alex. So. Yeah, it's just, just for clarification, in that consultation, is, are we going to bring in the point about um, some kind of visibility to members of the public that that has some kind of res restricted license. Having said that, I appreciate that. Even if you put a very simple sign on the car, is Joe Public going to know what it actually means? And I would suggest no, he wouldn't. So, <laughs> but it, Alan, but it's a good point raised, and I think what we've just done is we're factoring everything in. So everything, anything's possible here to help the operators become and get what, what we need to be. Because our job is to enable them to operate in a safe way. And I think the points made by by the Dave and Katina Sam have been excellent. So well done, you lot. Done well there. Um, are we okay? So if that's, that's being carried, that item number six, is that done, Chris, yet? Yeah? Happy with that? The vote's gone through on that. We're going to go to full consultation. And we're back to 
do you guys need to stay for the next bit? Excuse me, are you staying for the next bit? Yeah, okay. They're going to stay. Are you going to say anything? Just let us know, Dave. We're going to give it a bit more time. Um, and we're going to go right to number seven, which is another PowerPoint presentation from Chris. Where you go, Chris? Sorry, guys, just bear with me a second. It's not sharing it. Okay, sorry about that. So the next report, um, agenda, seven, agenda item seven, is consultation feedback for the DFT statutory standards. So at the last meeting of the committee on the 8th of June 2021, members considered a report um, highlighting the required minor policy amendments required to the existing policy to meet the implied DFT statutory standards. The necessity changes were highlighted in the report taken to the committee in June 2021. Within the statutory standards guidance document, the introduction to the standard states that the Department of Transport expects these recommendations to be implemented unless there's a compelling local reason not to. The purpose of this report is to provide feedback on the consultation carried out in response to the intended policy amendments, which are essential to comply with the implied statutory standards um, from the DFT. As found within the original report of the 8th of June 2021, attached to this report as Appendix 1, the standard contains a number of recommendations regarding matters connected to taxi and private hire licensing functions, which include criminality checks for local license, sorry, criminality checks for license holders, working with the police, sharing information with other licensing authorities, dealing with complaints about drivers and operators, training for members, criminal convictions and rehabilitation of offenders, safeguarding awareness advice, guidance and training for drivers, language proficiency, CCTV and licensed vehicles, regulation of booking and dispatching staff and record keeping. The changes required within our own policy, as previously suggested at the last committee meeting, since the South Ribbleborough Council taxi licensing policy was first adopted by the committee in 2016, various changes and amendments have already been made. With the hard work of officers and members over the last five years, the South Ribble Taxi Licensing Policy is recognised as a robust policy now. Nevertheless, some changes are required to bring the policy up to the standards, the statutory standards set by the DFT. It should be noted with satisfaction that the authority's current taxi licensing policy is overall broadly compliant with the majority of the DFT recommendations. So changes required within the taxi licensing policy are attached as Appendix 3. The formalisation and adoption of a clear whistleblowing policy covering the licensing tra taxi trade. The disclosure of barring service changing from the update service checks from 12 monthly to 6 monthly. Making referrals to the DBS service directly. Including county lines for framework in CSE training. Fit and proper person test word changing. Um, expedited process which would follow a revocation and a successful appeal and conviction policy amendments to include possession of a weapon, increase it from three years to seven years, drink driving, increase from five years to seven years, using a mobile phone whilst driving, an increase from an intermediate effect with a, sorry, intermediate offence within the policy to a major traffic offence. <coughs> Dishonesty would be an increase from five years to seven years, exploitation worded needs amended in the policy, and also for discrimination. The CCTV aspect of the previous report has been omitted. This will be looked at at a later date through a separate report, as our current policy is, as, only, as provisions for CCTV should drivers wish to install it. It does not need to be addressed as part of the DS, DFT policy changes. The issues around self rebel mandating CCTV have been addressed previously, previously at length by the committee and only recently voted on to, not to mandate CCTV. But drivers are fully entitled as the policy to obtain CCTV in their vehicles, providing it meets the criteria of the policy. I do propose some member training in the next 12 months on CCTV and the implications around ICO requirements to mandate CCTV. We can then look to readdress CCTV 
and its own item at some point next year and include this in the business plan for 2022. So the consultation feedback received, following the committee app approval to consult stakeholders, a six week consultation was conducted on the 9th of July to the 20th of August 2021. The consultation highlighted the required amendments to our policy and invited feedback from stakeholders. Having only received one consultation response during the consultation period, we concluded that due to the implied statutory nature of the changes needed, this had an impact on the number of responses in the consultation. The one response was in favour of the change being added to the policy and had no comments to make. The consultation responses are attached to this report as Appendix 2. Taking into account the lack, the lack of consultation responses, officers feel this may be due to the implied statutory nature of the standards. Members are now asked to consider the not, sorry, members are now asked to consider now to forward the proposed changes to full council with a recommendation to adopt the changes to the taxi licensing policy in relation to the use of the DFT statutory standards. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thanks very much for that, Chris. I'm not expecting that much really on this, only because obviously it's 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 about complying with the statutory requirements. So the committee are asked to note and feedback received and to be recommended that the report goes to the full council for adoption because we have done this. So um, that's what I'm expecting on this, unless anyone's got anything different. So I'm looking for a proposer here, proposer, Gareth is going to propose it and a seconder, Councillor Ogilvy seconded it. So we're going to go for the, oh, you want to come in and say something? Councillor Ogilvy wants to come in for something. To, before I do that, Councillor, are, are you seconding it too? No. We've just I'm um, just going to be looking for someone else. That's all. Okay, come on. Let's, uh, all right. Thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, a couple of points um, on page um, thirty about the uh, about the CSE, and it's a point that I've raised before, and this committee is aware of before this issue of the online training package that doesn't exist. Um, I'm just wondering what what do other licensing authorities in Lancashire do if LCC have given up theirs, and accepting as it does in this report that it it doesn't fully comply with the current policy wording. Um, and I'm looking at a legal advisor here. Is there any are we in any danger in the case of any unfortunate incident that we could come under any kind of legal challenge for? Um, the type of package that we've we've got, which doesn't comply with the, the current policy wording. Um, and the, the only other point I had was on page 32, and it may just be the way that, that I've read it, and it's the, the bit at the end of paragraph 25, the last sentence, it says, the council will expedite reissuing of the badge for the remaining life of licence before revocation. Now, I erroneously read that as how can you reissue the badge before it's been revoked just the way I read that so I'm just wondering would other people perhaps read it like that and I'm merely suggesting that that we make it a bit clearer by saying the council will expedite reissuing of the badge for the remaining life of license existing before the date of revocation and that just to me just makes it absolutely crystal clear for that. Um, but before I bring Alex in, Chris, would you want to respond first for the, the first point and then obviously the last one too, please? I'll bring Alex. As far as I'm aware, Charlie was using the same um, training package, which is, is now gone through LCC, so they've made their own as well. So they're in the same boat as us at the minute. Um, Steph's been looking pretty much every couple of weeks to see if anything new is created online. The only thing we've really found is um, CSE training for teachers, which is two hours long and it's not fit for purpose for taxi drivers. And the wording of the, the, the sentence on page 32. Yeah, the, the idea behind that, that is is that if a driver has been revoked um, and then they win by appeal, it's, it's, a sped, it's a sped up process that they get the badge back as quick as possible for the duration that's left on that, that licence. I have no problem with the intention, it's yeah. just the wording. It may just be me the way I read it, maybe nobody else would we, read we it. We can alter the wording slightly if it yeah. appeases you that once it's changing. Um, the idea is, is that they don't have to reapply um, and go through the rigmarole of an application process. They, they've been found not guilty in theory, haven't they? So they're given the badge back as quickly as possible. Um, and currently, we've no process in place for that. Because that's all right. I think the point, I think the point is we're happy with what it's doing. But we're going to bring our wordsmith in, Steph. Um, through you, Chair, 
have some I have a bit of memory of us agreeing to a change of word through the last committee meeting. We had a discussion about changing the word, um, which will be in the minutes, I'm sure, from the last meeting. Can we check um, that then? Yeah, yeah. And then can we just take on board what Council Olga be saying in terms of how it reads? Just just make a note and we can change it, just make an addendum to that. Okay. Alan's back in. And the bit that didn't get answered was the potential for any legal challenge. I'm, I'm bringing Alex in now. Okay. Alex, you're on. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, through you, Chair, it, it's clear from the uh, comments of the Licensing Enforcement Team Leader that the Council Officers, Stephanie, is doing everything that she can. Uh, what we need to remember, of course, is the, the fact that the, the training has been discontinued it was it, is not uh, a decision taken by this Council. So it's not of its own making, and it's doing everything it can to, um, to, to find a... Um, uh, a replacement package so uh, there could be reputational damage if this council was doing nothing but it's obvious that it's, it's trying to uh, do its level best to uh, find a substitute for that package so I, I don't see how it could do any more frankly uh, because it, 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 it's a third party which has discontinued the the, the training just, just on your other point councillor uh, Ogilvy um, you in relation to the word expedite, there's a leading case from 2017 um, involving Rygate um, and Banstead Borough Council and a taxi driver called Pavlovsky. And the uh, court held in that instance that if somebody has their licence uh, revoked because of allegations, which if true would mean that they were not fit and proper, if those allegations are subsequently found um, not to be correct and they are fit and proper, uh, that there should be expeditious relicensing and that was the phrase that was used by the judge expeditious relicensing so that word expedite is fully in line with a leading case on what happens when a taxi driver who's accused of behavior is subsequently exonerated and then is relicensed okay thanks for that alex uh, alan you okay with that response yeah just to say i'd have no problem with the issue but expediting it's it's as we've said it's just interpretation of of the wording as it's currently Written down. Okay, as they say, that's semantics. So we've got a proposer. We've got a thoughts on any. We've got a second there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, um, I'm rushing ahead. Maybe too quick. Maybe at times here. Peter, yeah, in you come. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I just say I'm a bit disappointed that we've had to sort of delay the uh, CCTV side of it, put it to one side. But I do appreciate it's such a big subject, uh, and there's a, probably a lot of negotiation that needs to go on to get that. But obviously I'm uh, conscious that, um, you know, the safety of passengers and obviously the safety of the drivers is really important. And I think that CCTV will help, um, you know, a 100% better situation to have um, to clear up a lot of uh, queries or things that go on um, within these taxi rides at times. So uh, it, ju it just just expressed my concern. That I'm, I'm just a, a bit sorry that we're having to leave that and delay it. Thank you. Thanks for that, Peter. And just a quick one on that. There is some legal issues in terms of we're not leaving it. We are dealing with it, but it's, it's going to be further down the line if that's okay. But I don't want to open that up on this one. So we have a proposer in Gareth, Councillor Gareth Watson. Do we have a second there? Derek Forrest, a second in that. Good, good evening, John. Welcome. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, so can we go for the vote on that, please? Okay, so that's that's going to go to full council. Thanks, everyone. Okay, um, last item, item number eight. And we are back to Chris and his PowerPoint presentation again on the vehicle age policy and licensing of Hackney carriage vehicles. Over to you again, Chris. Thanks, Chair. Can everybody see that? Am I sharing my screen there? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just to get ready. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so agenda item eight. Um, two items for members to consider within the report. It's the vehicle age policy and the licensing of hackney carriage vehicles. So the current timeline of where we've been with the vehicle age policy. So in 2018, a consultation exercise was carried out between the 1st of May 2018 and the 28th of May 2018. 
In July 2018, the committee agreed to take the report to full council with a recommendation for formal adoption to extend the vehicles in line to six years when first licensed and stay licensed for 12 years. That's throughout the board. That's wheelchair accessible vehicles and non-wheelchair accessible vehicles. On the 26th of September 2018, at the meeting of the full council, following an air pollution concern subsequently raised by environmental health, um, the policy was refused. In November 2019, a further report was presented to the Licensing Public Safety Committee. Members agreed that another consultation exercise, with this consultation ran from the 6th of January to the 17th of February 2020. Findings during that consultation were inconclusive. Um, at that point, officers made a decision to re-evaluate with a different option. So the current position, so purpose-built taxis and wheelchair accessible vehicles, we, we can take those onto the fleet until they're six years old. And all of the vehicle types have to be when they're four years old. So any saloon, hatchback, estate, vehicles like that. Um, and same again, vehicles can stay on until they're 12 years old if they're a purpose-built taxi or a wheelchair accessible vehicle. And all of the vehicle types, your hatchback, saloons, estates, have to come off at eight years old. Any application where the vehicle falls outside the council's age criteria is referred on to the committee um, for consideration. And the policy for wording can be found in section 22 on page three of the report. So since 2015, South Rulbury Council have only licensed new hackney carriage vehicles, which are wheelchair accessible. Currently, hackney carriage vehicle license holders issued on or before the 21st of October 2014 may replace their vehicle with another non-wheelchair accessible vehicle, and they've got what we call grandfather rights. The policy currently states, the decision will be reviewed in 2019 when the council will consider whether there is still a balance of vehicles for all taxi users, and thus, is, thus if, the, if the authority is complying with its equality duty. The council will consider whether there is still a balance of vehicles for all taxi users and if the authority is complying with its equality duty. Statistics currently license vehicles in South Ribble. The council currently licensed 105 hackney carriage vehicles. This was at the point of writing the report. 61 of those vehicles were licensed by a single operator. 44 vehicles licensed as owner driver of hackney carriage vehicles or with another operator. 14 of those hackney, hackney carriage vehicles were not linked to any operator at all, being full owner driver hackney carriage vehicles. 24 hackney carriages were WAV vehicles. The taxi licensing policy states the council will consider whether it still has a balance of vehicles um, just for user and authorities complying with its equality duty. The question is now, is there still a need for grandfather rights policy with regards to licensing new hackney carriage vehicles? The main objective of the grandfather rights policy in 2015 was to restrict the amount of non-wheelchair accessible vehicles, um, hackney carriage vehicles, and increase the number of wheelchair accessible vehicles operating within South Ribble. Since then, the only way to license a new hackney carriage vehicle is through this authority is to be present a wheelchair accessible vehicle. The policy wording relating to licensing new hackney carriage vehicles can be found within section 48 on page 8 of the report. To assist with the renewal of the age policy, um, the licensing of hackney carriage vehicles, the former head of licence had instructed an external review of the current taxi licensing policy. The review identified key points to address in regards to what policies should be revised with the new vehicle policy. The unmet demand survey has many points to take and account to decide in a way, on a way forward. The survey can be found attached to this report as background document two. It's a relevant recommendations set out in the report of the unmet demand survey. Revise the current restrictions on hackney carriage vehicles to encourage hybrid and electric vehicles to be added to the fleet, retaining the option for wheelchair accessible, accessible capable additional, but encouraging these to be as air quality friendly as possible. In the medium to longer term, move forward removing the age policy between wheelchair accessible vehicle and saloon vehicles from both sides of the trade. Finding ways to ensure that the current hackney carriage wheelchair accessible capable fleet is not diminished. The current total fleet is not particularly air quality friendly. And there are just three hybrid and non-electric vehicles in the whole fleet. None of the present wheelchair accessible capable vehicles would pass any clean air zone charging regimes and none of the wheelchair accessible capable vehicles amongst the most polluting. In December 2016, the council formally adopted 
the Southerable Air Quality Action Plan. This document, document was produced as part of the Council's legal obligation under air quality and identified a number of action measures that the authority would undertake to improve, maintain and protect the level of air quality throughout the borough. These measures include to encourage the uptake of low emission vehicles and reduce the age limits of taxis within the borough. Some areas in the county have already started to implement clean air zones. Some of these areas are also known as charging zones, whilst others do not apply any charge. A comment was made in the 2019-20 licensing work plan to revisit the age policy, in particular emphasis on vehicle emissions. Currently, nothing within the policy promotes an incentive to drivers to choose more efficient, less polluting vehicles. As per the policy that was presented to committee in November 2019, the total fleet of vehicles consisted of 256 vehicles. 89 vehicles did not meet the EU standards for emissions, and out of those 89, 76 were wheelchair accessible vehicles. The policy currently promotes an incentive to drivers to buy wheelchair accessible vehicles and not efficient low polluting vehicles. 2015, the fleet cons consisted of a small amount of wheelchair accessible vehicles and this needed to be addressed. The Council still has a duty to make a list of wheelchair accessible vehicles designated for the purpose of Section 165 of the Equality Act 2010. This still needs to make sure adequate vehicles are available to wheelchair bound passengers. Section 165 of the Equalities Act 2010 imposes the duty upon drivers of designated vehicles when dealing with disabled passengers travelling in wheelchairs or a person who wishes to be accompanied by a disabled person in a wheelchair. Those duties are set, are set out in Section 165, Part 4, as follows. To carry the passenger while in the wheelchair, not to make any additional charge for doing so. If the person chooses to sit in a passenger seat to carry the wheelchair, and to take such steps as reasonably necessary to ensure the passenger is carried in the wheelchair in reasonable comfort and to give the passenger such mobility assistance as in reasonably required. So the availability of electric and hybrid vehicles. The current policy only permits new wheelchair accessible hackney carriage vehicles which can be licensed from six years old and stay on until 12 years old. Whereas non-wheelchair accessible vehicles with more options for hybrid and electric cost effective low polluting vehicles can't be licensed as new hackney carriage vehicles. Non-wheelchair accessible vehicles can only be licensed from four years old and stay on for eight years. When researching the market for hybrid and electric vehicles, officers have found more cost effective options available to drivers in non-wheelchair accessible saloon type vehicles. This may be different in three years time when the infrastructure has changed um, but it built for renewal in, in three years' time, and currently officers feel that infrastructure available is not cost effective for drivers to look for electric wheelchair accessible vehicles. The current policy promotes to buy wheelchair accessible vehicles and has no benefit from purchasing hybrid or electric low polluting vehicles. A good example of this would be the current policy will only permit a hybrid low polluting Toyota Prius to be licensed as a new private hire vehicle up to four years old and remain licensed to eight years old. It won't allow a low polluting Toyota Prius to be licensed as a hackney carriage vehicle at all, as it's not wheelchair accessible, whereas a transit van that's been adapted to the needs of a wheelchair user could be licensed up to six years when first licensed and stay on the, stay on the fleet till 12 years old, and it could be licensed as a new hackney carriage vehicle. It's quite clear that a transit van is not going to be a, it's going to be a higher polluting vehicle than a, a hybrid Toyota Prius, yet the current incentive would be to purchase the transit van and not the Prius. An incentive for low mode polluting vehicles of extremely low CO2 emitting vehicles is required within the taxi licensing policy. Any changes in taxi age policy should be regarded for the existing Euro ratings, which since 2016 has required manufacturers to reduce emissions year on year. Euro 6 applies to all new cars registered from the 1st of September 2015 and benefits a 67% reduce in the permissible levels of nitrogen oxide in diesel and the introduction of particulate um, number limited for petrols. According to figures from the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, SMMT, the Euro emissions have had a significant influence on reducing emissions. So, taking all that into consideration, the proposed options for committee to consider regarding the age policy. Taking all this into account, officers have come up with four options for members to consider today, and officers ask for members to agree to consult the trade on each of the options. Option one would be to keep as it is, so purpose-built taxis and wheelchair accessible vehicles could come on the fleet up to six years old, all of the type vehicles up to four years old, 
purpose-built vehicles could stay on, with the wheelchair accessible vehicles, sorry, could stay on up to 12 years and all the vehicle types till eight years. Option two, reduce all vehicles to four years and eight years. So reduce all vehicles to fall in line, remove the option for wheelchair accessible vehicles to be licensed up to six years when first licensed, and also remove the option for them to stay on for the extra four years up to 12 years. So all vehicle types first, first presented would have to be up to four years old, and all vehicle types would only be able to stay on up to eight years old. The proposed wording around that condition would, is attached to the report as Appendix 1. Option 3 would have to have a blanket policy, reduce the um, wheelchair accessible vehicles down from six years to first licensed at five years, and up all of the other types of vehicles from four years to five years, and all types of vehicles would only be able to stay on the fleet until 10 years old. Option four would be to reduce all vehicles to four and eight years with the option of an extension for non-polluting vehicles that conform to a certain Euro rating. So reduce all vehicles to four years of age when first licensed as a maximum, but if it passed the CO2 emissions test of a Euro rating six or above, it would be able to be licensed up to six years old. And the same with when the vehicle can be licensed until all vehicles until eight years old and any vehicle type that's been past a certain Euro rating, meeting a set level of CO2 emissions would be able to stay licensed until 12 years. So that would include any Euro 6 rated vehicle, any hybrid or any electric vehicle. The incentive to drivers would be to buy a low polluting vehicle with an option four. Officers feel that drivers would look to buy non-polluting vehicles if they could purchase an older vehicle that would be able to be licensed for longer. This option could be renewed, reviewed in three years' time with the option of making the policy more stringent on emissions um, within the South Rebel licence fleet if the infrastructure is there at that point um, for drivers to buy electric and hybrid vehicles, which when officers have done any research at the moment, it isn't there at the moment. Exemptions from this rule could be for certain types of vehicles that do not pass the required CO2 level test. Depending on what type of work the vehicle is required for, it could be special educational needs, educational needs executive travel, um, airport travel, etc. Et Operators could, op could openly advise that authorities try to purchase low CO2 rated vehicles where possible, and that in three years' time, the requirement for all disabled and special educational needs transport all to be Euro 6 rating. The proposed wording can be found attached to the report as Appendix 3. Officers feel that the preferred choice would be option four. The incentive of being able to license a vehicle for long, longer if it meets a certain Euro rating um, criteria for low, lower CO2 levels would help create a fleet of lower polluting vehicles. Officers feel this would start to see an increase in electric and hybrid vehicles being added to the fleet. Drivers should find it more affordable to be able to purchase these type of vehicles with less restriction on age. Officers feel this is now a good time to review the number of saloon vehicles Hackney carriage vehicles licensed by this authority and look to cap the amount of vehicles um, of saloon vehicles licensed by this authority. Once the agreed set cap has been reached, a review could take place every six months or annually for applications for saloon type vehicles for non wheelchair accessible hackney carriage vehicles. Drivers would still be able to license any vehicle as a hackney carriage vehicle as long as it would be um, a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Proposed changes to the taxi licensing policy with regard to the licensing of hackney carriage vehicles can be found within Appendix 4 attached to the report. It would, it would create a controlled balance between um, low polluting vehicles while still complying with its obligations under Section 165 of the Equalities Act to still have a list of wheelchair accessible vehicles available. Proposed wording can be found within attached to Appendix 4 of this report. So following all of that, members are now asked to consider the evidence submitted in the report, agree that the licensing section undertake a period of consultation for six weeks with the relevant stakeholders in respect to the proposed options for the vehicle age policy, the licensing of hackney carriage vehicles, to agree, agree to receive a report on the outcome of the consultation at a future meeting and could consider what effect changing the vehicle age policy would have on the council's air quality commitments. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, you're getting better. That's your best one so far. Very good. Um, right. Obviously, there was a lot of information there and there was some references to the appendices too. Effectively, in a nutshell, what we're asking for here is 
that the licensing department go off consultation on these options effectively. Rather than us get into the whys and what for, I think at this stage, there was a lot of information. Um, we can all sort of take a little view either way. And I know there was a recommendation there, but in terms of the, the process, I think what we do need to do is get out there, get the consultation, get the options, and let's see what the industry wants as well. So that's where we're up to before I either open it up or I look for the proposer and a second there, and then we we take it that way because I think Derek's nodded off a bit there. Right, okay, so any com comments just before we go for, uh, I'm looking for a proposer, and no surprise, Councillor Ogilvie is coming in. Yeah, just very briefly, um, basically to thank the officers for a very comprehensive report on this. Um, it's clear that there's a number of conflicting objectives within this, so there needs to be a, an element of flexibility, and uh, it will be interesting to see what the consultation responses say. Thanks for that, Alan. Um, are you, hang on, are you stretching, Dave, or are you putting your hand up? You're not putting your hand up? No, 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 well, Dave... Tonight, well, no, I don't want you to go on all night because all I want to do, I want you to contribute to the consultation because there's a, a very serious point here tonight which we've heard on a, one of the other reports. We had one bit of feedback in terms of consultation and what we get a lot in the council is we need this, this and this. When we go out for consultation, the uptake's not as good. So if you can get the message out there and if you can make sure you champion Let's get some good positive feedback. That's what I would ask for. But if you're all going to speak, Dave, if you're all, could you go to the mic, please? But don't don't take too long. Go on. I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure, if I'm being honest, of how relevant this is for tonight or whether you do another meeting and, you, and I'll ramble on about all this at another point. There, there were a lot of things in there that I've, over the years, again, possibly from some of you guys, I don't know, I've argued there's some ridiculous rules for example the four-year rule where you can't bring a vehicle in that's four years and a day old that's only done two thousand miles but a vehicle that's three years 364 days that's done five hundred thousand miles i can license well that's just idiotic it's madness the electric vehicles are never certainly for, i don't know for you guys but certainly for me it's a it's a just a no no if i do one run to airport I'm charging it for rest of the day. So that's never happening. And I suspect nobody knows the answer to this, but I do because of previously standing up here and doing this. You, when this last went out, I think the numbers of taxis in uh, licensed vehicles in South Ripple was 226 last time this went out. I don't know what it is now. The number of vehicles driving through South Ripple per day, and it's purely down to location and motorways, is 140,000 vehicles a day. And you're talking about 226 for air quality. It's farcical. It's just like, and take out taxis, how many delivery vehicles that are in far worse condition than taxis, right? taxis are, are driving round South Ribble. As I've said to you, my vehicles drive out to South Ribble. So you've got all these delivery vans and some of these cars that are doing Amazon, I'll not pick on Amazon, but Amazon delivery, are in a complete state. And yet, again, we're getting hammered. And it, it's just wrong. The, the whole thing is wrong, but you don't do a Q&A thing where you, you guys might say to me or whoever else, why, what about this? Or what about it? It goes out, comes back, and you don't get a chance. And perhaps that would be a good thing that we, you could hit us with questions rather than us trying to try, explain why that's a bad idea. And then it just gets bombed off as has happened so many times in the last 17 years for me. Okay, Dave, another good contribution. You will be not be getting bombed off. We'll be looking for you to feed into this. And what we're, we're going to strive to improve what you do, because that's what our committee's responsibility is. But we've also got to look after the residents and our policies as well. So I know some of it you might think it's a bit, but I understand where you're coming from, because the reality is you are the operators. We're coming into it tonight, but look, it's valued what you've said and we will take it on board. But the most fairest process is consultation. So make sure you get what you're saying in. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so I'm looking for a proposer and I could do with a separate one in terms of balance tonight. I'm not looking at you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sharples has proposed it, proposed it and a second there. John could be, yeah, John's come in late and made a nice contribution. Well done, John. Okay, all in favour for that? We go for the vote. 
Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Right, that concludes proceedings. But just before we go, um, yeah, what Alan said there before, I want to thank the officers and Justin as well there, the back our officers here, Steph and Chris. There's a lot of, it's not an easy task what they have to do. And on a daily basis, the, fa the amount of calls we get, not just taxis and lots of other things and licensing is very difficult. So listen, over the year, I'm, I've been a new chair this year. Uh, these have been great. Honestly, your contribution is fantastic. So we left a box of chocolates upstairs for you. Make sure to get them, Chris. Okay. Um, I want to thank the councillors for this year because obviously we're coming to the end of the calendar year for your time and your efforts put in. Really valued and really appreciated. And for the guys in the room who don't know, that they've got your welfare and your concerns at, at heart and it's and, and they don't get paid for it, you know. <laughs> People think they do, but they don't get paid. They have a little allowance, but not much. Um so thanks to the councillors for that. Um, but significantly tonight, well done, you three at the back, Sam, Christina and Dave, you've done well. You've come in here, you've made an impact and um, you've you've changed our mind as well. So well done. Sam, you want to say something? Thank you so much, Sam. But I'm a driver and I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thank I'd like to give you a Let's go to the mic for Jackie. Jackie. Sorry, I'd like to try and give you a clearer picture as a driver of what I do, just so you can get a, a good idea. So I'm going to give you an example of a young boy who was eight, and I was asked to take over his school trip. And his school trip meant that I went to pick his PA up in Preston, and I drove all the way up to Lancaster, across the M6, onto a cross country for 15 minutes and then back again to the M6 once I picked him up all the way back down to Leyland and delivered him to his school in Leyland and I did that twice a day for him every day of the week to get that young man to the school that he needed to be in that's my job that is what I do Sam well done thank, thank you. you as well honestly brilliant contributions from the three of you tonight you want to be proud. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so that's it. I'm going to be the first one to say it to you. Have a nice Christmas. Because I won't say it till after Christmas. And bless you on planning. See you Thursday. So thanks for all your contributions at the end of the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.